Welcome guys to my YouTube channel. My name is Afri De Raymond Moore and today we're going to discuss the nursing diagnosis for respiratory condition. Alright, so when you look at this part of the board or this side of the board, we have got the lung alveoli. Alright, so now when you look at the lung alveoli, we're simply going to discuss the nursing diagnosis for all those conditions that affect the lung alveoli. That is uh, pneumonia, tuberculosis, COVID-19 and the respiratory distress syndrome. So all these four major conditions, they actually happen inside this lung alveoli. All right. Then this side of the boat, you have seen we have the airway. So what simply means that this condition, they actually affect the airway. They do not affect this condition. They do not occur or happen inside the lung tissue, but they happen along the airway such as the trachea the bronchi okay in this condition we have asthma and crop or croup also known as it laringo tracheal bronchitis abbreviated as ltb okay so now uh, this same condition they actually like uh, they happen in adult as well as in pediatrics but crop is more common in PID and the uh, respiratory distress syndrome, okay? So we'll begin by discussing the nursing diagnosis for the conditions that affect the lung alveoli, all right? So looking at the lung alveoli, all right? Uh, uh, when you look at the lung alveoli, we are seeing that gaseous exchange actually takes place inside the lung alveoli. So what would be the number one nursing diagnosis for us? If a patient has come with pneumonia or tuberculosis or COVID-19 or respiratory distress syndrome, what will be the first nursing diagnosis? Of course, the patient is going to have impaired gaseous exchange. So this is number one problem. Impaired, impaired gaseous exchange okay related to impaired gaseous exchange related to accumulation okay related to accumulation of fluids in the uh, you can even say lung alveoli Okay. accumulation of fluid in the lung alveoli evidenced by evidenced by dyspnea okay you can say evidenced by dyspnea or evidenced by difficulties in breathing are we together impaired gaseous exchange related to accumulation of fluid in the lung alveoli evidenced by dyspnea you're going to see that the patient is going to have difficulties in breathing and that is dyspnea. So when the patient has got pneumonia, tuberculosis, COVID-19, RDS, fluid is going to enter inside this box, uh, this line of your life, we have seen, I've written the X. So once the fluid enters inside, the patient uh, is going to have difficulties. They want, there will be alteration in the exchange of gas. Okay? Initially, we were not supposed to have fluid inside. But in all these conditions, there will be fluid inside the lung alveoli, which is going to make the gaseous exchange to be impaired. So that is number one nursing diagnosis that this patient will have. Then the second nursing diagnosis the patient is going to have is that, uh, I'm going to rub here. The, ne the second nursing diagnosis that the patient is going to have is that, uh, the patient is going to have what we are calling as altered okay altered thermal regulation okay altered thermal regulation related to related to stimulation okay related to stimulation of the hypothalamus 
related to stimulation of the hypothalamus by the bacterial toxins okay by the bacterial toxins evidenced by fever evidenced by fever or if you want you can say evidenced by temperature of uh, 38.9 degrees celsius okay altered femoral regulation related to stimulation of the hypothalamus by the bacterial toxins evidenced by fever what is happening is that once there's infection inside this uh, lung alveoli is that the bacteria is going to start releasing some toxins so once the bacteria start releasing the toxins those toxins they're going to go to uh, to the hypothalamus okay they will stimulate the hypothalamus then the temperature of the patient is going to rise up okay that's what i was saying altered thermoregulation related to stimulation of the hypothalamus by the bacterial toxins so what happens is that uh, once there's infection inside this lung alveoli all right those but uh, those infections the bacteria is going to start releasing the toxins okay so is that release of toxins there will be cytokines that are going to come inside then they'll go to the hypothalamus in the hypothalamus they're going to stimulate the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus is going to release prostaglandin that is going to make the patient's temperature to rise up okay so in short we just say altered thermoregulation related to stimulation of the hypothalamus by the bacterial toxins evidenced by fever okay so that is it the second nursing diagnosis under the lung alveoli condition all these conditions then the third day nursing diagnosis that we're going to talk about is in uh, chest pain okay remember the patient is going to complain of pain okay and if it is a baby who is actually if it is a baby with uh they just say a baby who's uh four years old the baby can complain to say i'm feeling the pain inside my chest the baby is six years old the baby can tell you the baby is 10 years old the baby can actually verbalize okay the baby can tell you to say i'm feeling the pain so we are going to say faintly chest pain okay because the pain this all the all these lungs they actually they are in the thoracic cavity that is where the chest is so the patient will be complaining of the chest pain okay chest pain related to related to distraction okay just write it nicely chest pain related to distraction of the lung tissue chest pain related to destruction of the lung tissue by the back uh, what's this by the bacterial toxins eh? by the bacterial toxins okay chest pain related to destruction of the lung tissue by the bacterial toxins exposing exposing nerve ending okay exposing nerve ending evidenced by evidenced by patient verbalizing okay now when we talk about uh, let us just go through chest pain related to destruction of the lung tissue by the bacterial toxins exposing nerve endings evidenced by patient verbalizing okay the patient is actually going to tell you to say i'm feeling the pain inside my chest okay sometimes the patient is going to start crying then you are going to not to say the patient is complaining of pain initially what happens is that if there is infection 
okay if there's infection inside uh, this lying at your light all this tissue uh, it is actually distracted okay all this tissue is worn out so as a result of that the nerves are going to be exposed and those nerves once they remain exposed the, the, the bacteria toxins are going to start stimulating the nerves and the patients start complaining of pain then the other nursing diagnosis that the patient to have is uh, is that the patient is going to have what we are saying as uh, altered nutrition status okay altered nutrition status remember once the patient is sick they can't eat well they can't eat a balanced meal so their nutrition status is going to be altered okay so we are saying that altered altered nutritional status less than body requirement okay altered nutrition status less than body requirement related to related to disturbance related to disturbance in the gastro intestinal tract okay evidenced by weight loss evidenced by weight loss so what we are saying is that uh, of course i know what can cause the disturbance in the gastrointestinal tract there are so many things but uh, you can say altered nutrition status less than body requirement related to disturbance in the gastro related to disturbance in the gastrointestinal tract that is the GIT evidenced by weight loss remember if someone is actually sick okay remember they cannot maintain a balanced diet okay the GIT begins to be disturbed the GIT is disturbed sometimes the patient to start the patient is going to start vomiting uh, that is going to cause anorexia which is lack of appetite okay so altered nutrition status less than body requirement related to disturbance in the gastrointestinal tract okay evidenced by weight loss then this nursing diagnosis okay this nursing diagnosis in all acute condition it is a risk okay this nursing diagnosis in all acute condition it is a risk because the patient who's uh, the patient who has an acute condition that condition is, go is not going to remain for a prolonged period of time so their nutrition status they are at risk of having impaired nutrition status okay so this is the fourth nursing diagnosis then what about the fifth nursing diagnosis that we have we also have what we are calling as a so this was the fifth nursing diagnosis we also have what we are saying well, what we are calling as remember this patient that risk of infection okay so we also have risk for acquiring risk for acquiring nosocomial infection okay related to related to compromised immunity related to compromised immunity Okay, so 
this is the potential problem those who are from talking about uh, those are actual problems but this one it is a potential problem that's why it's a risk okay and a risk it has no evidence okay the potential problem it has no evidence when you're writing the nursing diagnosis it only has the evidence when you are evaluating okay so it's risk for acquiring nosocomial infection related to compromised immunity of the patient okay related to compromised immunity of the patient that's it so this is the nursing diagnosis remember uh, a potential problem it has no risk but an actual problem it has got the it has the evidence sorry the potential problem it has no evidence when you are writing the nursing diagnosis it only has the evidence when you are evaluating okay then we also have the last one now the last one uh, is what we are saying that the patient can have risk for pressure sore formation okay we also have risk for pressure sores formation related to patient unable to tend himself or herself now, when you look at a risk, we say that the risk, it is a potential problem. Then it is not going to have the evidence when you are writing the nursing diagnosis. So it's risk for pressure sores formation related to patient unable to turn himself or herself in bed. Okay? So if the patient is unable to turn himself or herself, what is actually going to happen is that there will be pressure sores that are going to start developing. Okay? So, those are some of the nursing diagnosis under the conditions that affect the lung alveoli, which is this one, and these are the conditions. So, in all these four conditions, you, you can write the nursing, uh, what's this? the nursing diagnosis like we have said. Then, in children, okay, in pediatrics, remember that children, uh, they, they cannot do the daily activities on their own, especially neonates. So when you're writing a nursing diagnosis in children like neonates, infant, self-care deficit, it does not qualify to be the nursing diagnosis, okay? Because the children, they are unable to do the activities of daily living. Self-care deficit can only, can, it can only come in adult, okay? Self-care deficit, it only comes in adult. So, I'm going to give you an example of how you can write the nursing diagnosis under the self-care deficit like in, uh, in medicine when you're dealing with adults, okay? But in pediatrics, you can pick uh, the ones that we're from talking about. Please do not include self-care deficit in neonates or in infant because those cannot do the activities of daily living on their own. You need to assist them because they are children, okay? So what about an adult? If an adult has pneumonia, tuberculosis, so it will be self-care deficit, okay, related to self-care deficit related to reduced, okay, self-care deficit related to reduced uh, oxygen oxygen tissue perfusion okay causing fatigue evidenced by evidenced by patient unable to 
do activities of daily living okay so self care deficit related to uh, reduced oxygen you want you can say self care deficit related to uh, reduced oxygen and nutrient supply to body tissues okay uh, causing fatigue evidenced by patient unable to do activities of daily living or in other alternative you can say self-care deficit related to reduced oxygen tissue perfusion okay because if you're not if you're not receiving oxygen to your tissues you are going to uh, your tissues are going to undergo a uh, fatigue okay because they won't receive the you know for for each function in your body you actually require oxygen all right so if there's reduced oxygen tissue perfusion you are going to have fatigue so soft care deficit related to reduced oxygen tissue perfusion causing fatigue evidenced by patient unable to do activities of daily living okay so this is how it can come out when you're dealing with an adult but not in pediatrics so these are some of the nursing diagnosis under these conditions under pneumonia, under tuberculosis, COVID-19, RDS, these are the same nursing diagnosis. They apply in all these conditions. Okay, so moving on now to the conditions, uh, to the nursing diagnosis that affect the airway, we are only going to change a few, but some of them they are just the same as those that affect the lung alveoli. Okay, they are just the same, but only a few are going to change. Okay, so the first one, we have, uh, the first nursing diagnosis that we're going to talk about uh, under the conditions that affect the, the lung, the lung airway, we have what we are calling as, remember at first here we said impaired gaseous exchange because the problem was inside here, but when you look at the airway, this condition they do not affect the lung tissue. They affect the airway. Okay? The ones in blue, I'm sure you have seen. So, here we don't have gaseous exchange. So, you cannot say impaired gaseous exchange. Okay? That is wrong. So, the number one nursing diagnosis, it is ineffective. Okay? Ineffective airway clearance. Okay, ineffective, ineffective airway clearance related to related to accumulation accumulation of thick mucus okay along the airway. Evidenced by dyspnea, or if you want, you can say difficulties in breathing. Okay, so now here we say that we have impaired gaseous exchange. Now, on the airway, okay, when you look at the airway, airway, we are simply looking at the conditions that are affecting this airway. So, the number one missing diagnosis it is ineffective airway clearance related to accumulation of. Thick mucus along the airway, evidenced by dyspnea, or if you want, you can say difficulties in breathing. Okay, because the patient is going to fail to maintain this airway to be patent to remove the mucus that are going to accumulate inside this airway. So as a result of that, that is how that is the reason why we are saying ineffective. Okay, then the interventions they are just the same as for impaired gaseous exchange. The interventions they are just the same for impaired gaseous exchange okay so remember I said that some of the nursing diagnosis that we have under the conditions under the the lung alveoli they are just the same as for those that affect the airway only a few changes so like the first one we made we did we did this first change then the second one uh, the second one we have uh, Remember the second one we had uh, 
we had chest pain, right? And the, the physiology that brought the chest in this patient with uh, this condition was the lung alveoli, right? Now let us look at the chest pain, the physiology in, uh, con uh, in these conditions that affects the airway. So here we have chest pain. So how is chest pain going to happen? Remember, yes, it is in the chest, but it is not happening inside the lung alveoli. So we cannot say related to destruction of the lung uh, tissue because it is not happening inside the lung tissue. It is happening inside the airway. So chest pain related to chest pain related to destruction destruction of uh, mucosa lining okay chest pain related to destruction of the mucosa lining of the airway okay um, secondary to inflammation secondary to inflammation evidenced by evidenced by patient verbalizing all right so chest pain related to destruction of the mucosa lining of the airway secondary to inflammation evidenced by patient verbalizing so the patient is going to tell to say no i'm feeling pain in the chest and if it's a uh, an infant of course they are just going to start crying that is the uh the the evidence that you are going to see in an infant the infant is just going to start crying okay so that is the chest pain that is how the chest pain is going to come under the airway and then the rest they are just one and the same okay the rest they are just one and the same for risk for pressure source formation risk for acquiring nosocomial infection they are just the same altered nutrition status they are just the same remember that altered nutrition status less than body requirement in all acute condition it is a risk it is a potential problem it is not an actual problem in all acute condition but in all chronic condition it is the actual problem okay so guys this was a this was our discussion about the nursing diagnosis for respiratory condition in the next video we are going to discuss in detail about how to write the interventions and the goal aim as well as how to evaluate the detailed nursing care plan for respiratory conditions. Thank you so much. Please, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, click on the red subscription button. Thank you.